Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is John, the RPG Lord. In this video series we're going to learn how to create a dungeon for your D&D &D game that players are going to love to explore. Today we're going to work on combat encounters in the dungeon. Now, in the last video we learned how to split up the rooms and what's going to happen in each one of them. So, today we have to decide while well, we said that in rooms one, two, and eight, there's going to be a fight. What we haven't decided is, well, what are the players going to be fighting? The first question you have to ask yourself is, obviously, what um, level are my players? You can't give a, a level one group an ancient dragon. That's going to be a very fast fight. And you can't give a level ten group a bunch of goblins also going to be a very uninteresting fight. So, the first thing is you have to calculate what kind of challenging rating your encounter has. And if you play a different game than Dungeon & Dragons 5th edition, then this might be completely different for you. But uh, most games have some kind of a challenging rating uh, to give you an idea what you can throw at the players. Now, for that matter, we're going to go to a website called Dungeon, and it shows us the challenging rating that are acceptable. Now, for this um, video purpose, I'm going to assume that we have a group of six players, and they are level one. So now I know that I can give them two to six quarter uh, or uh, challenging rating. I can give them two to three half a challenging, one to two level ones, one level two, or one level three creature for the group to be challenged but not wiped out. Now, if you if you uh, play with a group that is very skittish, you can obviously change this here to an easy encounter or if you want to be really rough and you have a group that can get it tough you can switch this to a deadly encounter but I would leave it at any difficulty level so now one thing that I use all the time is I take a screenshot of this to give me an idea of what my group can handle in case I should. On Windows, and I'm on Windows, guys, sorry. If you're on a Mac, I can't help you there, but I'm sure you can figure out how to take a screenshot. Uh, I press Windows key, Shift, and S. Then my screen goes murky, and then I draw a box around it. And I have my screenshot. So let's put this back in. I paste this right underneath my dungeon map. And here's my... So I know for my fight, I'm going to have to fight uh, into this neighborhood. Now, depending on your game, you can use one or several monster books. Due to copyright issues, I'm severely limited what kind of monsters I can show you and for that reason, I have chosen the basic Dungeon and Dragons rules. And again, you will get the link for that. You get the dndwizards.com. You go to this website and scroll down and click here, DD basic rules. And that gives you a cut down version of DD. Now, the monsters start on page 1110. Now, I've already looked up and there's not many options in the basic rules for what monsters they give us. But uh, in general, you want to guide your dungeon that it goes from, uh, the fights go from easy difficulty to medium difficulty to boss monster. So, we are in the our first fight is in the Great Hall, right when they walk in. Now, I can use I can use uh, two to six uh, quarter 
records and for that we're gonna use skeletons huh? skeletons also always staple diet for your RPG games now yes I've looked up look these guys up so you don't have to watch me scroll and on the basic rules there on page 152 now here's my skeleton ske uh, uh, stat block once again I take a screenshot I highlight why do I do that why don't I simply look it up in the book because Every dungeon master knows that time is money. If you have to constantly look inside your rule book what kind of uh, monster it is and what page it is, it's going to take a long time. Now, if you can't get the PDFs of your monsters in many companies, uh, give the monster manual else as PD uh, PDF. I do not know if um, your game has that, but yes, they come in PDF. Then I would strongly suggest you get them in PDF so you can do what I have just done. If that is not an option, then get yourself um, post it notes and put them inside the man monster manual so you don't have to look for hours on end until you fight. Your skeleton, uh, I mean, your monster, whatever you're looking for. Uh, skeletons, we have a challenging rating of a quarter. So, I'm gonna be a rough air uh, guy and I'm gonna give them. Yeah, let's move this to a new pa uh, page, it keeps bugging me. So, I have six skeletons here. That's going to be their first fight. The second fight happens in the dormitory. Now, once again, we are not given many options, but I have decided I'm going to use the ghouls for this one. They are also undead creatures. And in the basic uh, rule book, they are found on page 130. And here we have a ghoul. Once again, I take my screenshot and I put it into my A thing. Okay. Now, Ghoul has a challenging level of 1, so I know that I can give him 1 or 2, and since I'm a rough guy, and my players like it well, I'm gonna give him 2. Now, which leaves us with only one fight left, which is our boss monster, which happens in room 8. So I go back into my rules and for my boss monster, I'm going to go to uh, page 159 and I'm going to pick the white. Once again, I'll take my screenshot. And I put him here. So now I've populated all my fights for the dungeon. And if you're fine with that, then you can stop the video now. But there's more to do. I don't know, but one thing, and I hated that about the uh, about video games when you ran into an NPC uh, Morrowind was notorious for that 
it doesn't matter at what time of the day you walk into that shopkeeper's house he is standing there at the same spot unmoving doing nothing doesn't matter if it's six in the morning two o'clock at night or twelve o'clock noon he's just standing there and a lot of gms have this problems that they don't give their monsters um anything to do what makes the dungeon come alive is if you give your monsters a purpose if you give them a background of some kind now i'm not saying go right out a page long background history for each monster no that's that's just too much no but most of us if we walk into a room we have a reason to be in there and the same with the monsters so our uh, skeletons are in the great hall where the altar is now what can we do here how about how about when the players come in the skeletons are worshipping at the altar they died there they are and once again I can't spell uh, they died at that place they have come back to life they are maybe mindless autonomous they are still standing around the altar worshipping giving the players a chance to surprise them giving them a chance so in other words, once we work on the description in a later video, this is going to come into play because this is going to give you dungeon life. Now, for our second fight, we have two ghouls. Now, we know that ghouls don't sleep, but they, what, what do they do? in a dormitory maybe maybe they have eaten something in there maybe they, they found a corpse an old one and now they are eating it otherwise we could hide them in the beds maybe the players come in and the ghouls are hiding how about that let's do that uh, so there we have a chance for a surprise attack so we write the ghoul, uh, ghouls are hiding. Oh my god, my spelling is off today. Hiding in the beds. Waiting to surprise the players. Ghoul has an intelligence of seven, so it's not the sharp purpose tool in the shed, but smart enough to know that, hey, I hear someone coming let's hide maybe we can surprise them so there you have more chances for role-playing and we are going uh, uh, going to the white our last fight what's the white uh, doing well he is the boss monster he could be a priest turned undead he could be placed there for whatever reason but we need to give him a purpose so for our purpose uh shall we say uh, when the player as walk in he's go uh, going over some paperwork sitting at his desk And we can take it from there what we want to do with this paperwork if anything so now i have given you how to populate your place with monsters and give them a purpose now what are some other tools or some other activities that your monster could be doing maybe they, they could be doing craftsmanship they could be caring for another creature cooking eating maybe they are on a search of some kind exploring your dungeon they could be guarding something 
hunting, foraging, so maybe some kind of magical activity. They could be gambling or playing. As we did with our skeletons, they could have some kind of religious activity. Um, maybe something that is completely nonsensical. Uh, something that is only important in that room, a specific task. Or maybe they are mindless autons and fulfilling the same task they had in life. Whatever it is, all I'm saying, guys, do not. Just let them stand there, like in the old video games, okay? Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And remember, there's only one true RPG Lord. I wish you a good day. Let me know in your thoughts in the comments. And the next video is coming in a few days. Have a good day. Bye.